It was Wurzel Gummidge's wedding day, and the excited scarecrow hopped from foot to foot as John helped him into his morning suit. I don't rightly understand it, so I don't, he admitted. First off, that there aunt Sally reckons as I ain't no more used to her nor a wooden leg to a woodpecker, and then the next thing she's been and gone and told the crow man she can't wait no longer. Oh, aye, contrary damn creature, so she is. Yes, well, it was that old wedding dress that did it, I think, said John. The one aunt Sally found in Sue's dressing up box. Well, it don't matter what done it, we's getting married, so we are, and not a fourth time neither. I've been waiting 40 years, up no week. And all that morning, the guests arrived at the barn where Sergeant Beetroot had taken charge, striding up and down with his hazel swagger stick, marshalling them into place, bowing low to Earthy Mangold and the saucy Nancy, and looking disapprovingly at Wurzel Gummidge's long-lost cousin Cobber, who come all the way from Australia for the wedding. Oh, that was so exciting, isn't it? cooed the saucy Nancy to Sergeant Beetroot. She'd had a new coat of varnish, and her hair was braided with seaweed. I've never been to a scarecrow wedding before. You land lovers have all the fun. Sergeant Beetroot bridled as he spotted the saucy Nancy winking at Cousin Cobber. It's not fun, ma'am, he barked. It's a solemn ceremony, and I'll thank you to stop winking at the other guests. Oh, I can't help myself, dearie. He's ever so handsome, isn't he? Who is it? That's Wurzel's Cousin Cobber from Australia, he replied in a sniffy sort of voice. Stowed away on a grain ship, so he did, when he was a lad. I came back lately the same way. The saucy Nancy was entranced. Oh, Australia. Fancy that. He's got the sea in his blood then. Same as what I have. There was a murmur of approval from the other guests. And Sergeant Beatrix looked up to see a strange procession coming through the woods. First, led by Sue in her best frock, a mangy old donkey hauled a cart. And on the cart, on a rickety wooden kitchen chair, Aunt Sally sat erect, very proud of herself, in a tattered, old, once-white wedding dress. Behind the donkey cart, in a wheelbarrow pushed by John, came Wurzel Gummidge, looking almost smart in a moth-eaten old morning suit and pleat with spats and a grey top hat. Sergeant Beetroot marched to the edge of the clearing, turned smartly on his heel and called the company to order. A scarecrow has called! Wait for it, wait for it! Scarecrow has called! Hatching! Ciao! The scarecrows shuffled and lurched into two ragged lines in front of the barn door, and from it came the strains of a harmonium. Sue helped Aunt Sally carefully down from the cart, and John dumped Wurzel Gummidge out of the wheelbarrow onto the grass in an unceremonious, undignified heap. As the scarecrows collected themselves, scowling at John, the two children picked up Aunt Sally's train and followed her slowly forwards. Scarecrow, he squawked! Umbrellies! Hop! barked Sergeant Beatrice and Aunt Sally marched with dignity under the arched umbrellas into the barn. Behind her, with a lot less dignity, Wurzel Gummidge chatted to the guests. Ah, good afternoon, saucy Nancy, he beamed. Afternoon, soggy boggart. Uh, nice of you to come, Worthy Mangold. Have you brought me a prezzy? Because if you ain't, you gets no cake. My, 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 he breathed, as he spotted his long-lost cousin. If it ain't Cousin Cobber from Australia, Turned up again like a bad penny. What's your blue? croaked the suntan scarecrow, the corpse on his hat wobbling in the breeze. What's the matter then? Didn't he like Australia? Eh, yeah, nothing wrong with Australia, mate. They got rooks there the size of flipping hostages. I tell you, Bruce, a scarecrow can walk tall down under. Ah, pity he didn't stop there then, sniffed Wurzel Gummidge. The Sergeant Beatrice stepped smartly forward and saluted the crow man. Oh, presently correct. The crow man struck up the scarecrow's wedding march on his battered old fiddle and led them all into the barn, where he took his place like a preacher on one side of a wide table. Wurzel Gummidge and Aunt Sally moved up the aisle between the guests to stand opposite him. Are you Wurzel Hedgerow Gummidge? The scarecrow frowned. Ha! Uh, what a funny question, Your Eminence, Mr. Crow Man, sir. Yeah, you knows my name, sir, seeing as how you gave it to me. The crow man sighed. Just answer the question, Wurzel. Are you Wurzel Hedgerow Gummidge? Ah, I am that, sir, he beamed. And are you Aunt Roll Up, Roll Up, Three Balls of Penny Sally? I am, whispered Aunt Sally beneath her veil. The crow man raised his voice to speak to the entire company. And who giveth this Aunt Sally away? Aunt Sally threw back her veil. 
Give us me away. Give us me away. Oh, begging your pardon, Mr. Crone, and for speaking so impertinent, but I am far too precious to be giveth away. How have you know that a fairground gentleman once offered fair guineas for me, sight and sound? Aunt Sally, explained the Crowman patiently, if you're to marry Wurzel, someone has to give you away. Marry Wurzel? I'm not going to marry Wurzel. There was a horrified murmur from the assembled scarecrows. The crowman raised his hand to bring them to order. Aunt Sally, are you telling me that you've changed your mind again? Good heavens, no, Mr. Crowman. I never meant to marry that dirty old scarecrow in the first place. Ain't far too grand. The whole idea's preposterous. The crowman's eyes flashed fire, and the scarecrows shuffled nervously. Then why, may I ask? Have we called all these scarecrows together? He hissed softly. Well, so they could admire me in my beautiful wedding dress, and I could have my beautiful photo took and be in all the papers. Oh, Wurzel, said the crow man to the crestfallen scarecrow. I did warn you. <laughs> Can't you make her marry me, sir? I worship the ground she stands on, Mr. Crowman, sir. Couldn't you pull her legs off and not give them back until we're a man and wife? The crowman sadly shook his head. Eh, hey, don't mind me asking, Mr. Crowman, sir, butted in Cousin Cobber. But if there ain't gonna be no flipping wedding, does that mean there ain't gonna be no flipping cake? Ah, ah, uh, I'm afraid not. No wedding, no cake. Cousin Cobber groaned. Ah, yeah, there's gotta be a wedding. I came thousands of miles from Australia, and I'm not going back without my bit of cake. The saucy Nancy fluttered her eyelashes at Wurzel Gummidge. Well, shipmate, if there has to be a wedding, and she won't take you on, I wouldn't mind having you aboard. The scarecrow was taken aback. Me? Never. You's too ugly. Cousin Cobber examined her speculatively. Oh, I don't know so much, Blue. I've seen worse, out in the bush. Well, you marry her then, suggested Wurzel Gummidge. The Australian considered it. Well, I wouldn't mind. Fancy travelling the high seas back to Australia, do you, mate? The saucy Nancy fluttered her green eyelashes. The high seas? Oh, Mr. Crowman, sir, marry us this minute. The Crowman held up a warning hand. Now, saucy Nancy, you must think what you're saying. Marrying Wurzel's cousin? would be almost as bad as marrying Wurzel himself. The saucy Nancy shook her head stubbornly. I don't care, sir. To get back on the high seas, I'd marry the ship's parrot. The crow man smiled a slow smile. Oh, I suppose if I didn't, you'd still run away with him to Australia. Oh, I would, sir. As fast as my wheels would carry me. Then I'd better make an honest figurehead of you. And Wurzel, he called to the woebegone scarecrow, if you can stop blubbering for a moment, you can be Cobber's best scarecrow. Wurzel Gummidge brightened visibly. Uh, best scarecrow, sir. What do you think of that, Aunt Sally? Stupid old Wurzel's going to be the best scarecrow. Aunt Sally gave a derisory sniff and turned her back on him. Very well, sighed the crowman. Let's get on with it. Are you Cobber Outback Gummidge? Yes, I am that. And are you the figurehead of the saucy Nancy, registered at Kingston upon Hull? Aye, aye, sir, beamed the figurehead proudly. And do you, Cobber Outback Gummidge, truly love this figurehead, the saucy Nancy? The scarecrow stood up straight and nodded firmly, making the corks on his hat wobble. She'll do for me, Blue, he said in a loud, proud voice. And do you, the saucy Nancy, truly love this scarecrow, Cobber Outback Gummidge? She weighed him up with a seafarer's critical gaze. Well, I could go farther and fare worse, she admitted. The crow man was relieved that there seemed to be no more hitches. Right, then repeat after me. I, Cobber Outback Gummidge, would you take thee, the saucy Nancy, for my wife? In sunshine and in snow, at seed scattering time and in harvest, in new clothes or old, through plague and pestilence, fire and water, 
till both of us falls to pieces. The crow man turned to the saucy Nancy, proud and erect on her pram wheels. And now, saucy Nancy, he began. Repeat after me. I, the saucy Nancy, do take thee, cover outback gummage for my husband. In sunshine and in snow, and as the awesome words rolled over the heads of the gathered scarecrows, Aunt Sally was miles away, her eyes tight shut, lost in her dream world. Eh, Aunt Sally, she whispered to herself, do take thee, the Archduke of Romania, Bulgaria, and most of Egypt, for my husband, with crowns and jewels, with diamonds and rubies. At the climax of the ceremony, the crow man lifted high over his head a basket of fruit and berries and corn. And as he spoke, he slowly lowered it towards the bride and groom, who solemnly laid their hands upon it. Apples for health, he intoned, corn for plenty, berries for happiness. By the wind and rain and all the seasons, I pronounce thee scarecrow and wife. There was a ripple of irreverent but heartfelt applause as the bride and groom kissed. Wurzel Gummidge's hand crept towards Aunt Sally's, and she, lost in her daydreams, took it for a moment, before waking up and shaking him off with a shudder. As the scarecrow's face crumpled, the crow man leaned over to him. Cheer up, Wurzel. And you too, Aunt Sally. Your part of the ceremony is only just beginning. The scarecrow looked puzzled. Our part of the ceremony, ceremony, our part of this year wedding business? What's it going to do with us, sir? Might as well chuck us in the dustbin right now, so you might. Aunt Sally turned and looked at him sharply. You speak for yourself. Um, has our part of the ceremony got anything to do with cake, Mr. Crowman, sir? She asked, perceptibly. Indeed it has, Aunt Sally, answered the Crowman. A Sergeant Beetroot emerged from the back of the barn pushing a rickety, wobbly wheel trolley with a massive, towering wedding cake perched precariously upon it. Tier upon tier of icing and marzipan and currants rising up towards the roof. At every scarecrow wedding, the feast commences with a ceremony of throwing the wedding cake. And this is traditionally led by the best scarecrow and the chief bridesmaid. Wurzel Gummidge's eyes lit up. Throwing the cake, your extraordinariness! He breathed rapturously. You mean that me and Aunt Sally can chuck all that there cake at each other? Oh, bliss! Squeaked Aunt Sally, clapping her hands. Not all of it, the crow man smiled. You must let the bride and the groom have a look in. Oh, I should think so, cried the saucy Nancy. Here, bags all the marzipan, chimed in Cousin Cobber. Right then, cried Wurzel Gummidge. Cop this, you bundle of firewood. And he wrenched off the top tier and hurled it at Aunt Sally. The ceremony of throwing the wedding cake had begun. Aunt Sally was ecstatically happy. And you caught this, you horse's nose bag, she screamed, as she heaved a lair right back at the scarecrow. Let the dingo see the jumbuck then, called Cousin Cobber, elbowing his way to the front in best Australian fashion. Cop this, you pair of nutcrackers! The saucy Nancy was at his side. Here, get this in your mush, you land-loving ice stack. In seconds, the bar was a fly with cake and jelly and trifle and cream as the ceremony got into full swing. The crow man slipped prudently away, and John and Sue, after exchanging a quick conspiratorial glance, dived eagerly into the melee and began heaving and hurling with the best of them. Oh, this is the best wedding I've ever been to, gasped Sue, wiping cream from her eyes. Me too, agreed John from the thickest part of the fray. Suddenly there was a soft, penetrating chord from a violin. The scarecrow's foes and they looked up to the gallery where the crow man stood with his battered old fiddle. Friends, he called. Friends, take your places now for the scarecrow hop. With a raucous cheer, the scarecrows lined up around the barn. And in a moment, they were dancing for all they were worth. Dancing as though they would dance forever.